Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for April 26, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from the Reverend Enica Mitchell, North Central Regional Minister. The first letter of John takes up the question of real love, as Eugene Peterson translates the ancient words in the message. My dear children, let's not just talk about love, let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. In her reflection this week, Enika tells us about how we might live that reality. It's really simple, actually. It's all about love. In this Easter tide, we continue to balance our faith and our doubts, traveling the difficult and often treacherous road between head and heart. I open the newspaper and see only stories that reveal the pain and suffering of people gone astray in so many ways. Our political discourse has no room for true discernment. Our moral compass seems fogged up by easy judgments and by lack of courage to speak the truth. It is hard not to get drawn into a spiral of apathy, indifference, and paralysis. Yesterday afternoon, General and I were getting to the car after a wonderful visit with a colleague over coffee. Suddenly, behind me, I heard a voice. I turned my head, and a tall, slender gentleman said, "'Could I see your dog, please?' I've just lost mine, and he looks just like him. I invited General to jump back out and meet a new friend. In his own very special way, he knows what to do. And in the midst of the mall parking lot, General worked his magic. Tears were shed, and a connection was made. We talked for a while, and then he said, This has made my day. Can I have your card? It's really simple, actually. It is all about love. The gospel message in John's epistle invites us to live love in our lives wherever we are. Self-sacrifice can take many forms, but the truth is that it really is simple. God's amazing and death-defying powerful love, so evident in the old, old stories told about Jesus and his love, needs to be retold and relived in a world out of balance, out of touch, filled with people hungry for meaning and relationships that promise transformation and are pregnant with hope. So let's get on with it and love boldly and extravagantly. Let's be mirrors of God's love. Here is a prayer for this week. God of new life, may we simply live and love as mightily as you love us. Amen. In the news this week, yesterday afternoon, In a private ceremony attended by clergy and some victims' families, Connecticut Governor Daniel P. Malloy signed into law the end of the death penalty for new crimes committed in the state. Connecticut is the 17th state to end the practice of capital punishment. Delegates to the Connecticut Conference have called for an end to the death penalty since 1973. Around 30 people from all over Connecticut came to Middletown last weekend to inform and inspire one another in their work of environmental advocacy in their home churches. They shared both practical and emotional resources with each other, as well as stories of their achievements, 
raising awareness among members with newsletter stories and coffee hour tables, helping them to green their homes. Replacing high-wattage incandescent bulbs with energy-saving compact fluorescent lamps in the church sanctuary in West Hartford. Taking leadership of 350.org's Moving Planet event in Middletown last fall. And even in Glastonbury, installation of solar panels on the church roof. The Reverend Gordon Bates, retired from the Connecticut Conference staff and a longtime leader in environmental ministries in the National United Church of Christ, laid down this challenge. We've got to be able to claim in front of our congregations, we are the environmental experts. We are the people you come to. If we don't know the answer, we will find it. So I just want to be sermonic for just a moment (laughs) and lift you up to say that this is really important. This is not game point anymore. Our world is at stake. And I realize that. On April 15th, 31 young people and adult advisors from the Northeast chapter of Give Squared, the conference's Youth in Service program, descended on the small town of Thompson to help sand and paint the new offices of TEEG, or Teague, which are still under construction. Teague is in its 25th year of providing food distribution, fuel assistance, parenting education, and youth programs, among others, to a steadily increasing area in northeastern Connecticut. One of the volunteers said they were there to build a community that supports those in need, but also plant seeds of empowerment to help people sustain their own lives. The Congregational Church of Thompson provided both physical and spiritual food for the work group. Give Squared Northeast consists of young people from churches in East Woodstock, Canterbury, Woodstock, Thompson, and the Westfield Congregational Church in Danielson. UCC pastor and tax professional, the Reverend John Zapula, has notified conference staff and church leaders that some IRS auditors have recently begun rejecting documents provided to donors by churches as inadequate proof of a gift. Though these cases are rare and not final, Zapula recommends that givers make sure they have a backup form of documentation, such as that provided by a cancelled check. From the April issue of Contact, We're highlighting the story of a prayer pager ministry in Cheshire. When one member faced both grief and serious illness, he would wear an old-fashioned numeric pager. Other members would beep him when they were holding him in prayer, and he found it a truly uplifting experience. We also look at what makes music sacred, and we hear from a South Glastonbury student who is determined to go beyond the motions of church. Also on our website this week, the conference staff bids a sad farewell to the Reverend Mia Douglas, coordinator of Sacred Conversations on Race, to take up her expanded responsibilities at Faith Congregational Church UCC in Hartford. We have a new minister profile posted of the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Miller, the pastor of the North Stamford Congregational Church UCC, and a woman of great dynamism and energy. You'll find these stories and more at ctucc.org slash news. It's the end of April, so we welcome conference archivist John Van Epps to the studio with this month's Touchstone with History. Why is Connecticut known as the Constitution State? It's because the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut of 1639 is considered to be the first written constitution in the colonies. In 1639, Pastor Thomas Hooker of Hartford and other leaders drafted a contract to govern the affairs of the Connecticut River towns of the colony. It is also noteworthy for including a statement of rights and not including any reference to the king. The fundamental orders were replaced by a royal charter in 1662, which included the order's rights and procedures and included a fair degree of autonomy for the colony. This week is the 350th anniversary of its adoption. It was this royal charter that representatives of the king attempted to take back 
in 1687. Joseph Wadsworth and some others are said to have engineered to have the charter stolen and hidden in the famous Charter Oak, so they didn't have to surrender the charter. Nevertheless, the charter was abrogated. However, with the overthrow of King James II in 1688 with the Glorious Revolution, the royal charter and the colony's rights were restored. There's another reason why Connecticut can be considered the Constitution state. During the Constitutional Convention of 1787, there was a great debate and even deadlock about the apportionment of representatives to the new Congress. Finally, the Connecticut delegates, Roger Sherman and Oliver Ellsworth, proposed that the House be apportioned by population and the Senate with two representatives from each state. This great compromise was approved. So Connecticut can justly be called the Constitution State. CT Women of the UCC hold their annual meeting in Orange this Saturday. And this is Spring Action Weekend at Silver Lake. Boundary training for authorized ministers will be held in Bloomfield on May 3rd. The Church Historians Workshop will be held in Avon on May 5th. Still Speaking Ministry Coordinator Felix Carrion will be in Milford also on the 5th. And there are three Silver Lake events that same weekend. The Men's Retreat on the Edge of Fire, the Adult Action Weekend, and Silver Lake's Open House on Sunday. Learn more and sign up at silverlakect.org. As the sun finally shines a little longer this spring, imagine your bare feet greeting the warm sand between your toes. Imagine the fireflies sparkling along the tree line above the campfire. Hear the singing floating over the hill from the Waterfall Chapel. Revel in the delight of discovering a new best friend in the bunk above you. In your imagination, you're at Silver Lake already for a week-long outdoor ministry experience that changes lives and makes friend-making easy. Greet God in God's backyard at Silver Lake this summer. Learn more and register at www.silverlakect.org. God is working through all the people who fill our lives with hope and care and grace. There's still room to register, but hurry, we're filling up. We look forward to welcoming you to Silver Lake, your conference center. Back, watching the fireflies. The New England Association of United Church Educators holds their annual event, Welcoming the Living Stone, May 8th through 10th in Craigville, Massachusetts. The second annual Youth Revival will be May 11th at Liberty Christian Center in Hartford. Lillian Daniel and Martin Copenhaver, authors of This Odd and Wondrous Calling, will be available for conversation in Southington on May 11th. And the spring meeting of the Connecticut Conference, featuring Lillian Daniel as the keynote speaker, is May 12th in Suffield. We'll be considering why church matters. Sign up now for the National Youth Event. This great gathering of youth ages 13 through 18 will be held July 10th through 14th at Purdue University. We have over 60 registered already. You need to sign up by May 7th to be on board one of the two bus trips, which will get young people to these five days of dynamic workshops, inspiring worship, hands-on service projects, and rockin' recreation and music. A service bus includes a stop in Cleveland, Ohio for a mission project and to tour the UCC's national offices. The express bus will leave a little later and go straight to Purdue. You'll find all the information at ctucc.org slash n-y-e. And you can always learn more about what's coming up in the conference at ctucc.org slash events. 
And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Enika Mitchell for her reflection, to John Van Epps for our touchstone with history, and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.